Hey guys, this is Daniel again, and there is one more thing I want to talk about very we briefly before starting my character modeling series uh, from Monday on. Uh, so, and that's something about rigging. Since I had that character model, I played a bit around with rigging and did some experiments, and I want to share some of it um, to make it easier for you. So, let me tell you one thing uh, before that, though. Uh, all you see here will be pretty simple examples of, of how rigging works in theory or, or actually I shouldn't say rigging it's it's more about skinning so how to apply weights and uh, stuff from um, you know from a rig to a model uh, to make that look realistic so the theory here is pretty simple but it will be really hard for you uh, to apply that on a model but it's still good to know I think so that's the idea behind this video, to um, share my experience with theory behind skinning and stuff, or at least as much as I found out. Um, so I'm not a very good rigging guy but and skinning guy, but uh, still I hope you'll be able to learn something from this. So I'll create a simple test scene here. Um, so basically all this will be is, you know, this kind of shape. And we'll be bending this. So I'll add a new armature system, a bone, and yeah, just move it down to here and make it, you know, this kind of two part system. And there are now various ways to make this bend well. Now, the easiest way would be take the, select the first object, select the armature system, use Control P, and say automatic weights. And then you can select the armature system, go to pose mode, and you'll have some deformations. And those are not bad, actually. Those are pretty good, in my opinion. Um, but you still see that there are a few issues with that, especially when you have a more complex object. You see how it loses volume here? Uh, at this point, it's just... It has lost lots of volume, and the bending is not very realistic either. Um, now there is another way that is that many, let's undo that quickly um, alright, now it should be undone now there's another way that I found quite a few artists like to use uh, as well, um, for example, Sintl, the Sintl rig was done in a similar way uh, so that technique uses a deformer mesh that is deformed by the armature system to deform the high resolution mesh, which has the advantage that uh, you can have lots of um, accessories and stuff on there and the deformation will be the same, but it also has some problems with it. But we'll, you'll see it uh, very soon. So I'll select this deform mesh that I created, just this box here. Uh, let's change it maybe to wire displaying so you can see through and then the armature and I'll make with automatic weights again and now you see we have this deformation which is okay now select this high resolution mesh and give it a mesh deform modifier and bind it to the cube and now whenever you deform the cube the high resolution object within it will deform as well and this one gives us some pretty good results as well in my opinion better ones uh, now, the problem is here that it's quite hard to do changes after you have, you know, bound those together. So you really have to be sure that your character is done. And the other thing is that, what was it? Well, all right. Uh, of course, when you have a very complex object, you have to make sure that nothing sticks out of this, of the boundaries of this cube. Not even a little bit because if it sticks out of it it will not be deformed so and it takes lots of uh, space in the blend file saving those deformation data and, and stuff but you know it's pretty good now there is one more um, thing a and now this is what people normally do let's say since we still lost some volume here um, there are some other software packages that have some very advanced system where it fixes that with a half simulation, half... I know how it works. But 
In Blender we don't have such a thing, so we have to fix uh, this loss of volume manually. And this is what this video will be mainly about, I think, or at least that's the important thing that I want to show you in this video. And that's how to do it. So there is something called Blend Shapes in Blender. Uh, you can find it here. Just add uh, the basis, which is this normal shape, and then the first key. And now within here, we'll be able to uh, make changes in the mesh and then have a slider to blend between the normal version and the blended, uh, the first blend shape, uh, which is the, the edited version. I'll just very quickly apply the subsurface modifier. Um, oh, of course, we cannot apply modifiers when we have shape keys, so make sure to do stuff like that before. Um, check if it still works. Okay, it's all right. Uh, now, I will also select these two icons to, you see the difference is in edit mode. You won't be able to see the effect of deformation or you will be see, uh, able to see the effect. Uh, yeah. We also want that for editing it. So we again make the base and the first key, and then we go with the first key selected to edit mode and do some changes on the deformation, um, change it in the way you want it to be. And now you see you have the slider and it makes it different the shape. Now, yeah, and there are now lots of things you can do to make this look better. Um, And you can also apply another modifier on top of it, you know, stuff like that. I just did this work quickly. But you can spend lots of time on this and do it properly. Now, this would be quite a good deformation, but you see the problem is when we um, reset the rotation of this, we want this key to go back to zero as well. And there's a way to do that. So you go to Graph Editor and um, right click on this value and add a driver. And then you go here to drivers and then you go here to the first key and select the first key and then over here you need to change a few things uh, with the settings here. So the first thing I'll do is I'll select the object here that manipulates this value so that would be this specific bone in my armature system which is this one and I want uh, this value to react on the I think it's the X rotation the local one um, let's test this real quick. I'll turn it and then you see here. Yeah, the value has changed So that's uh, the right one um, Let's say this is only four deformations up to 90 degrees. So There is the value and what we now want to do is To make sure that value 1 is reached uh, at 1.5. I think that's how it worked Let's see if it does. Oh and one more thing you need to do uh, the type you need to change to maximum value and now you see when it's rotated none it's um, it's just straight as it should be and once you bend it down you have this nice fold here and the deformation you can hide this object and I think that is how people rig in Blender uh, those at least who are really good at it um, you know I just played around with it and did some tests and tried to find out how to do it as good as possible. But you see, it's much harder than this in, in reality. Um, yeah, anyways, it's still a good thing to know. You can actually use these kind of drivers for almost everything here in Blender. You see, even this while you could have a driver or I don't know what else, uh, everything, I guess. The intensity of a material, the color, I think, as well. Can it? Yeah, it can have ha all of these can have drivers. Um, yeah, so drivers are, are a pretty cool thing, and even if this in particular didn't, uh, yeah, tell you a lot or didn't teach you much, knowing how to use drivers itself is already a big thing. Yeah, so that is all uh, as far as my research and rigging goes. Um, yeah. Hope you liked it and thank you for watching as always.